Hello. Welcome to True Hoop with me, Gerard Hector, and Coach David Thorpe. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, my friend. How are you? Good, good, good. We had a lot of basketball uh, over the last few days. Um, some of the college variety, some of the NBA variety, uh, some overseas variety. We'll get to all of it. But, David, I wanted to start with the uh, Women's Final Four. And off the top, congratulations to LSU, uh, the national champs, winning their first national championship in program history. Um, congrats to uh, Iowa for making the national final game. Congrats to Virginia Tech and South Carolina for making the national semifinals in the Final Four. Um, anytime you get to the Final Four, that's that's a huge accomplishment. Uh, so well done by the coaches and the ladies uh, on the floor. All right, David. There's been a lot of sort of talk coming out of this game. Um, some of it for the gameplay, some of it for on the off the court stuff or antics, as people like to say. And I want to kind of go there and start there. So Angel Reese of LSU um, in the closing seconds uh, of their win over the Iowa Hawkeyes. She was seeking out Caitlin Clark uh, and doing the John Cena can't see me celebration. So you guys are you're listening. You obviously can't see me. I'm waving my hand in front of my face like Cena does essentially saying you can't see me like that's how good i am like you're not even in my like <laughs> in, in my realm right uh caitlin clark did that uh numerous times throughout the season and throughout the ncaa tournament um angel reese also did the pointing to her ring finger saying ring me which is yes a ring is coming uh that's what happens when you win national championships um david I i'm a different kind of person when it comes to this stuff um i don't care like it's sports and it's entertainment. Um, my thought process about uh, someone celebrating and people getting mad is my response is always the same. Well, you should have won the game or you should have won that possession or you should have done whatever it was. If you don't like someone celebrating or you get upset about it, that's on you. Play better and it won't happen, right? That's the one piece. The second piece about this that drives me crazy is when bad faith actors and disingenuous people use sports as a proxy for culture wars right and it's just it's tiring and it's stupid and like i'm not even gonna get into who said what because i don't want to give those idiots any airtime they've gotten enough it's just dumb look sports is a microcosm of the larger society in which it inhabits the society's a fucked up place so what makes you think sports is gonna be some model of perfection and it's just not are there moments and sure but it's made up of the same people who are on the outside in the larger world. So I, I just, we have to stop using sports as this thing of like, this is how you're supposed to behave. Like, no, like these are competitors. Things happen. All right. Like, again, once we're not going into violence, girls or men too, swinging or punching on each other, which none of that happened in this. Like, why are we even having this discussion? Let's move on. Uh, yeah. Um, I hear what you're saying, obviously, and um, it's ultimately really not a story. It's uh, it's young people do things, older people do things. Um, I watched it live. I, I first of all, I love that we're talking about women's basketball. Yeah. That so, Caitlin Clark deserves a ton of credit for that. Oh yeah, the ratings LSU, by the way were super high for the Final Four. I mean, really she's high. she's she's must watch TV. She's LSU excellent. was fantastic and mm -hmm. well well coached and. At first, I was disappointed in their style, but um, but it, it grew on me. They were more cerebral. They proved to be more cerebral, which I think is a big deal. Uh, their point guard down the stretch was amazing. Uh, the girls play super hard, super competitive. I, I cried at the end like I always cry after a championship. I don't ball, but uh, I used to dream about being a, a, a champion as a coach at the college level. And so I'm emotional when I see these girls or guys jumping up and down like, what an amazing thrill that must be. Um, uh, my only issue with the player in question was the timing of it. The game was 15 points. The game was over. I am a big, this is not at all to do with her character or personality. I think it has to do with the fact that Caitlin Clark is so fucking good, which I never heard of this girl until a week ago. Cause I don't follow <laughs> that sport. I have no time. I, as you and I just talked about, there's right. enough basketball in the NBA for me to see it busy enough and, and still try to be a husband and a dad and everything. Um, she's really incredible and can get so much better. Uh, there's a lot of holes to a game. That, well, not a lot. There's some holes to a game. And I think LSU was so incredibly focused on not not on us. Like, you're not – yeah, she had 41 mm -hmm. against the number one team in the country, undefeated mm -hmm. South Carolina, who's very well coached and very tough. And I think LSU was so pumped up that when they realized we beat her, they, they this one young lady 
couldn't just keep it to herself. And I don't mind if she pointed to her finger, look at the crowd. I didn't know that she did it right to Caitlin Clark. Whatever. It's not, it's, this is not a big crime that says, you know what, young lady, you know, try to win again next year and don't give them any fodder. This is just the dad and me talking and the, and I've been coaching since I was 22. And I always talk, talk to my players about process and managing emotions, but we also never won a national championship. So, and she's an all American, a great player. Um, I told you after, on this, or a call earlier after the game, she interviewed with Holly Rowe from a, ABC from ESPN. Right. Mm-hmm. And just could not have been sweeter. Like just said, love to have the girl over for dinner with my family. She seems really interesting and charismatic and whatever. I, I, she made some comments afterwards. I saw it to the press about people trashing her all year. So that was probably, I don't know what they were saying. She's an amazing player. Um, I'm sure that fed into it as well, but, but, I'm a big believer in always trying to take the biggest picture of you. The biggest picture of you is women's basketball has really improved. All those girls Mm -hmm. could go play pickup with anyone in the world. And I mean, NBA players included, and they'd be just fine. They know how to play. They're skilled. They're tough as fuck. They would fit in, first of all, better than almost any man on the planet. (laughs) Uh, Unless you played high level high school or above, you can't play with NBA players. You don't know what you're doing. They know what they're doing. They understand the game very well. And I, you know, I, I'm up I'm around till I'm 80 or 90 years old. And I can only imagine how many dunks have you, I've even watched. Like there's high school girls dunking like never oh, yeah. before. It's mm, fucking yeah. fantastic. Give it time. They're, they're coming. And uh, there's, they've never taken a backseat in competitiveness. Never. That's never been the case for women. Uh, as we, I also love the fact that there were two women coaches. Mm-hmm. I think, I think until we're ready to have a woman coaching a man sport, we should, we should not, I wish there were no men. Fuck Gino, let him leave. Uh, he, let him go coach men. He's done, it's won 11 rings anyway, right, I think, right. whatever. <laughs> let, let a woman run Connecticut. Um, we need more of that. And then eventually we'll have a nice little diversity. Well, women will be coaching NBA and college men and vice versa, and that's fine with me. Um, but generally speaking, I like the fact that, that we had two women coaching. The games were, were well attended. They always have been. Mm-hmm. I think ratings you said were great. Mm-hmm. And the level of play, I mean, LSU scored over 100 points in 40 minutes. Yeah. Now, true. Iowa didn't guard great, but it's because right. LSU is way quicker and faster. And they had to pick a poison, and they try to be around the rim more. They still got beat up at the rim. And then LSU shot great. First half, second half, I mean, to, to me, there was a decision in the second half. This goes to strategy. They're up 15 in the second half, whatever. They'd stop shooting threes, basically. And so they made one three really late uh, where the game was over anyway. They just said, you can't catch up to us if we keep scoring twos. They just kept making 12, 14, 15 footers. They went through a cold stretch. The game got tight, mm-hmm. but it worked out just fine for them. And, uh, and yeah, it, it is what it is. And I don't I, – listen, we're in a world time now, Gerard, in this world because of, because of our previous president where there's a segment of society who gets off on being a bully and being a racist. And so when they get a chance to be heard through social media about that, they show their colors very well. And they're flagrant about it. They're not just racist, they're flagrant about it. And we can see them a mile away. Right. Yeah. We can see them a mile away. No doubt. It's, um, you know, the last thing I'll say uh, about all this is that um, Angel Reese, you know, basically talking about, you know, how people were talking about her all year. You know, it's a larger conversation around how women's players, uh, in the college, yeah. certain women's players are covered and talked about, right? Like, for instance, Dawn Staley's University of Carolina Gamecocks. Look. They play a physical brand of basketball. Like that's so what? wrong with that. Who, who cares? Nothing like, wrong with that. Right. Like it, you have to lean into whatever your strengths are, however you recruit your teams, whatever, and build your team based on the personality and strengths that they have. If you've got a bigger physical team, you have to use that to your advantage. If you've got a team that's more skilled or whatever, whatever, you got to figure out what does my team do best. And I've got to try to exploit that every single time to give us the best chance to win. And oftentimes, these are black women we're talking about in Angel Reese right. and the women on South Carolina. You know, I think it's it's a thing we have in society where language is so powerful, David, and people say things offhand. And I don't know if for sure. I mean, sometimes when people say things offhand, you know what they mean. Like when someone says classless, like they've been doing online, like that's just a dog whistle and a substitute for the real word they want to say, which we know what that is. But when someone says things like, oh man, playing against that team, it's like being in a bar fight, right? I'm not necessarily saying that the person is outright racist but what happens is you see subtle things that it's like well, why does it have to be a bar fight right like because when you think of bar fight you think of like 
elements of people that aren't really great, right? And so this is the problem. We have to be so careful with how we speak and our language and how we're describing people. Like tough as nails and ballers, cool, no problem, right? Everybody gets what that is. And that's part of the thing that that a lot of these women are fighting. And so, you know, again, kudos to LSU, kudos to Iowa, kudos. To, again, Caitlin Clark's fantastic. Um, you know, come back next year as a chance to be a two-time player of the year. And, you know, the one thing I'll say about her is, you know, man, the women's game is evolving so much. She's doing the the pull-up three, Steph Curry. Uh, you from know, deep. From deep, right? Fantastic. Um, you know, we're going to see this continue to evolve, and you're going to start to see some even more amazing things than we've seen so far. And I'll be very curious to see next year what kind of season she's able to put together. we got people already talking about her as the greatest women's player ever. I'm like, guys, well, let's calm down. Like, I mean, Brianna Stewart did win four straight NCAA tournaments, three-time player of the year. Like, uh, you know, there have been some other really great players, but Caitlin's for sure fantastic. And again, kudos. I met Teresa Witherspoon when I was in Denver oh, last yeah, yeah. week. She had a hell of a career. Uh, there's so many. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Um, to make a whole squad, to make a catching. Yeah, like I go Rossi. listen. I go back to Cheryl Miller. Cheryl Miller. Yeah, I mean Cheryl woman, swoops. Like, come yeah, on, this. that women of Troy document was great. Um, I uh, I think that first of all, you're supposed to if you've got a bunch of really athletic players, men or women doesn't matter. Like, you better be athletic and physical. Otherwise, what's the point? Right. right. It's like having a bunch of great shooters, but pounding the ball inside the whole time. That's just right. stupid. Right. Yeah, you're supposed to do it that way. This is the game. This is how we play the game. They did. I saw no, I never even thought about that. I don't pay attention. I don't, first of all, Twitter and me are not friends anymore. <laughs> so I'm not on it anyway, but I didn't, I didn't realize there was a thing like, okay. like I, I've coached against some of the dirtiest teams you could ever imagine in high school. Almost always who are rich white schools, Pri- <laughs> private, private. Cause they, they've been getting away with shit their whole life. Cause mom and dad were too. Right. And, and I'd say, I was speaking to a player recently who had to play an Ivy league team. And I told him before the game, this was a couple days before the game, like, don't think for one second those boys are soft. Yeah, right, right. Just because, the, just because they come from money and are smart enough to get into that Ivy League school, like, that's, getting in wasn't easy in many right. cases. Right. You have to be smart. And they're willing to fucking push and shove. And that's, like, okay, yeah, they're, they're, being tough has nothing to do with the color of your skin, for sure. And it doesn't often have to do with your socioeconomic background either. It's a, there's a lot more to it. And good coaches know how to get the most out of the players no matter what. Yep. And uh, and so yeah, so but the best news of all was Caitlin Clark didn't seem to care. No. And the 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 Iowa center who fouled out mm-hmm. could not have been more gracious in defeat. Uh, I I didn't really pay attention to the game enough to know whether her calls were legit, but she didn't she didn't let it get her down. She just played, shook hands afterwards. Both teams were great um, that way. And uh, yeah, it's just it's good. Listen, we love basketball. We want as many people. All those girls, I guarantee you, are NBA fans. Oh, no doubt. We need more of that. The more we have young girls playing basketball, the more those girls will grow up to raise kids who love basketball. Good for the sport. Bring yeah, it all we, in. We need we as many fans it. we can get. We love it. Absolutely. Uh, all right, David, switching to uh, the NBA, I was yeah. looking at something interesting today. Uh, futures, so title odds, right? And the Vegas future odds versus 538's likelihood percentage of winning the championship are so fascinating to me. Um, the top two teams, according to 538, in terms of chances of winning the NBA title, who do you think they are, according to 538? I would say Milwaukee and Phoenix. Okay. So it is the Celtics at 25% and the Bucks at 15%. That's according to 538. I thought maybe because they're both in the same conference, there would be a pick one from the West. So but yeah, those are the two favorites for sure. And actually, according to 538, the next favorite team is another East team, the, the Sixers, Sixers at 12%. Yeah. Those are the three best teams. Right. So now, oh, excuse me. Uh, no, it, it, it is the Nuggets at 14%. Then uh, the Grizzlies at 13%. And then the Sixers at 12%. So very interesting. Uh, wow. By, by 538. Now, according to Vegas, Bucks, yes, number one. Who do you think number two is according to Vegas? Denver Celtics plus 380. Third, the Phoenix Suns plus 500. Phoenix number three. Okay. Nuggets plus 800. Yeah. Sixers plus 900. Warriors plus 12. Grizzlies plus 19. Lakers plus 3,300. I say all that's, that to that's say. That's the best bet, right? That's the best bet right <laughs> that, there for that value. Is, that for is value. a very good value bet yeah. for sure. Yeah. We've been saying that you 
you were prescient enough. You said this at the beginning of the season. You're like, ah, guys, it's going to be a wide open, and it's particularly wide open in the Western Conference. I think in the East, we're pretty clear that those top four teams. Top four. Right. I, w- I wouldn't just throw Cleveland out. Yeah, yeah. Those top four teams are very good. Yeah, right? it's, three, like, it's three plus one, mm-hmm. but it's not three plus zero. No, no. Yeah, Cleveland, Cleveland is good enough to cause some problems. And then you have uh, the Knicks and Nets right now, the rest of the top six. Meanwhile, they're, the West, they're not good enough. Who the hell knows? Denver's won right now, but, you know, they have some some holes. Uh, uh, Milwaukee. Memphis was playing the best basketball, winners of seven or eight straight until they blew a lead last night, playing horrendous down the stretch, um, but still very good, right? Two seed. The Kings, three. The Suns locking into four. So I wanted to look at teams in the West um, who have been looking a little unsteady down, down the stretch here. Start with the Clippers. Of course, the Paul George injury, but, man, they lost some rough games. Two to... Uh, one to Memphis, they kind of waved the wove the white flag. Kawhi didn't play the second half of that of, of that home home series, and then to the Pelicans uh, over the weekend. What are you seeing on the floor from the Clippers? Well, we're writing about right now all the teams in the West. Just just kind of like a big picture view. Uh, without Paul George, I mean, does anyone think they can do it? I yeah. I don't. Yeah, they don't, yeah. They don't. even with him, only because the West is so fragile uh, that anyone can come out of it. But um. I just, they just, you know, I don't always think you are who your record is. I don't always think that because of injuries and things. But the reality is there are just over 500, maybe three games over 500. They can't seem to put stuff together game in, game out. And um, without Paul George, I just don't think they'll have enough. Yeah, I just don't think they'll have enough. But we'll see. Yeah. You know, if Paul George, would we know when Paul George is coming back? No word yet. Right. No word yet. Yeah. We'll find um, it this week. Yeah. Let's look at the Warriors, um, another team who kind of was playing from pretty good basketball, right? But lost a tough one in Denver last night, a game they needed. That drops them back down to the six hole. No, you, you win one game, you're up. You lose one or lose two in a row, you're dropping back two or three spots. This is a team who I've said, and yes, the Wiggins um, absence is is clearly, uh, it's, it's, not, it's notable, right? It's causing them defensive issues. Uh, but even when he was here, this is a team who I believe your record is who you are. This is kind of who they've been all year. They're unable to string together consecutive quality uh, wins and play, particularly on the road, which they're going to have to do in the postseason. Yes, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Clay Thompson have done that a million times in their career. They're four times champ- four time champions as a result. But as you say, coming off those injuries, someone like Clay, he'll have spectacular nights, but they'll have some dud nights too, right? Like it's just, can he have more great nights than dud nights? I don't know. Same with Draymond. I don't know. Yeah, my concern with Golden State, they're they're on the road defense. Last night they lost to Denver without Jokic. Without Jokic. Yep. Yeah. That's a bad loss. Um I think that they uh if they had Wiggins, I'd like them a ton. Um they they Peyton will help a little bit, but he's playing eleven, twelve minutes a game. Um, you know, they need they need more athletic wings. Uh Kuminga's too young to count on, in my opinion more than a game or two. Um, their core is their core with, with pool coming off the bench as a score and DiVincenzo playing well, He's playing very well. Steph Curry looking great. Looney and Draymond, they just, we know who they are. I'm worried about their bench. We're writing about this. Uh, I was this morning, I was doing this. Um, uh, but I think lack, lack of athleticism is really going to hurt them. Mm-hmm. Lack of depth is really going to hurt them. And they've not been a good transition defensive team. So matchups might be an issue depending on who they play. Um, and they're always going to be on the road, like you say, and they're just a terrible road team. Yeah. So you'd think that they can galvanize around their defending champs, but the, the record suggests that that probably is not going to be the case. Yeah, and it's like, you know, it's funny because like this idea of switch flipping, like I understand it and get what you mean. I just don't know that this team has the requisite flip switching ability, right? Like in spurts, you can see it, right? You're like, oh, this looks like the Warriors. How does anybody beat them? But can they do it consistently? That's the part I don't think they're able to do right now for all the all the reasons you said. Um, T-Wolves got Cat back, so that's good. Uh, hasn't been looking great. <laughs> they lost um, three straight. Lost three straight, so that's – after actually playing well. They were playing that, much better, yeah. And, it, and we said this. You go on a, a, a three-game losing streak at the wrong time, like now, it's pushing you further down, further, further down the hole. What are you seeing from the Timberwolves uh, on the court? Well, I thought when they traded D'Angelo Russell, they were saying, um, "Yeah, 
we'll try it again next year. I thought oh, he was there punting. Too, yeah. yeah, I thought he was too good a player uh, to just replace with you know the aged Mike Conley, who I like. But um, they did have a nice little run. They are a decent team. But the problem, Gerard, with all these teams is you're fighting for a seventh or eighth, which means you're on the road in Denver and and uh, Memphis, Memphis. Mm-hmm. who uh, are both flawed for their own reasons, but they're still much better than you. Mm-hmm. And so now you got to beat Denver at home is fantastic. Mm-hmm. I think Memphis at Memphis, home is best record at home, even mm-hmm. better, right? Mm-hmm. So you're gonna you're unlikely to win one of those four games on the road, yep. and they're likely to beat you one of your games at home. So to me, the bottom West teams are lucky to win a game in the first round. Like the, the I'm gonna probably pick. We'll see what happens if LA is a seven or eight. The Lakers, which they could very well be. Mm-hmm. Um, that's different. But these other teams, I, I would say, are going to be lucky to win one game in the postseason. Uh, another team that was kind of flirting with that sixth spot and were playing well or, you know, getting on a, on a nice little streak with the Oklahoma City Thunder. I still think they make the pl- they make the play in. You have been loving them all year of what they run. Um, and they, they're they a fun team, David. Like, they they are rangy. They got wings. They can shoot it. They, you know, they're just – and Shea, of course, is phenomenal. Incredible. Gets the free throw line. I don't know twelve Unguardable. times a night. He's like it's just he's, he's, he's so good. Yeah. Um, they will be a fun team to, if they get in the plane. I think that team could cause some issues. Again, I don't think they're going to win the series, but it's like, ooh, do you want to play OKC? They're they're fun. They're a fun little squad. Yeah, I mean they're 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 going to shoot. I would think a ton of threes. So their variability is going to be very great in any game. Uh, and they're hard to guard because they just drive the kick so much that everyone kind of does it. And Shea is such a key to that. He's just mm-hmm. so impossible to stay in front of. His his surge dribble is unbelievable. His so shot good. making ability to get fouled is amazing. Um, but they're building for the future. You know, they're they're the type of team if they make the playoffs, incredible. It doesn't matter if they can win one game at home, they'll be thrilled. I don't think they'll be. A, I don't think they're a real threat. If there's just the West is just the East is deep. It's just the Eastern beasts are so much better. The West doesn't have that overwhelming team probably unless Phoenix really you know Durant's healthy and all of that. And even then, they're a little bit flawed. Um, I, I just don't think these teams do much. Yeah, no, I, I I think you're right. A team that you have not been able to quit is the Los Angeles Lakers. Yeah. Who, by the way, playing good ball. Winners of seven of their last ten games uh, on a three or four game winning streak right now. Uh, LeBron's like, oh, I'm feeling good, man. We we like where we're at. They could potentially get into that sixth seed, I think. Uh, let me check where they are right now. Standings. Lakers. Yeah, they're only a half game behind the Warriors yep. and Clippers. Right. So, so, you know, the Warriors get we, get weird and start losing games, and the Clippers, we already talked about them. They do the same thing. Man, imagine if L.A. Snick snuck into that six, and now 3-6 is Sacramento. Lakers? Oh, man. I'd be picking the Lakers. Ooh. Yeah, for sure I would. I, I liked – all year long I've said L.A.'s roster was good enough to be a playoff team. Darvin Ham sucked, and they were inju- injured. A.D. most specifically mm-hmm. – and Schroeder and Thomas Bryant to start yeah, the year, LeBron yeah. James. Um, but they made some trades and are even deeper. They have, they have a, I mean, the depth is an issue, ironically, depth is an issue for almost every team in the West, except for the LA teams, who are not two of the four best teams. Mm-hmm. But they are deep, which gives them lots of weapons to try to fire at and the ability to deal with an injury in any one game or foul trouble by almost anyone. Yeah, I think I think LA is um I think hopefully Darvin Ham gets out of the way. I think he probably would. I don't think he'll do anything crazy. Uh let A D and LeBron I mean A D is back to playing great. Yeah, he is. Austin Reeves is playing great. But LeBron is gonna be very, very good in the postseason. If LeBron and A D are playing like how they play, I see what you're saying, right? Because that elevates Austin Reeves and Schroeder and everybody else around them. And at Troy Brown, like, yeah, yeah, that's, and uh, uh, um, Malik Malik Beasley. Beasley. Mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. that's a, a, that's a tough out. A so if you're Sacramento, well, I will say, you know, look, Sacramento, I don't think they're gonna they're gonna roll over in that series because Sacramento is very good and super athletic and plays with a ton of pace. They're very good offensively. They can't uh, guard. They, yeah, they just and they're trying. Mike Brown said after the game last night they lost to the Spurs without Devin Vassell and Kelton Johnson. That's San Antonio really controlled the whole game. They were lucky Sacramento to get to overtime and then got beaten overtime. Um, and Mike, Mike's, Mike called the team soft. That's, a, that's throwing the gauntlet down. That's crossing the line. And I, he had to. Like we're, he said at home, we're just soft. And uh, they'll, they'll be more focused in the postseason defensively. But going back to that switch flipping, I just, 
It's just yeah. not I, I I think they're I wrote this today. I think they're the most likely team to be upset in the first round. And they have not without, shown without it. knowing who the matchup is yet. And they haven't shown it all season, right? If you're the twenty something ranked defense all season, why am yeah, I gonna believe that all of a sudden right. you're That's gonna right. be great come postseason? That's right. Um, you saw the Pelicans up close in Denver uh, over the weekend or uh, end, end of last week. Yeah. What are you seeing from the Pels? Zion will come back, I think, maybe, some point soon. He does not look good, in my opinion. I saw, okay. him, I saw him work out before the game, and uh, he's heavy to me. His legs look heavy. His body looks swollen. I think he's lost weight from at his worst a month or two ago, way down from where he was a summer ago. But to think he's just going to come in and save the day, you know, I don't see that. I had a, I had a Pelicans insider say to me, we have a Hulk, when he was talking about his process, his, his, their postseason prospects. Well, a Hulk on a lot of blubber. He's heavy. <laughs> Zion, I saw him warm up before the game. I, listen, I love the Pelicans. They have two of my kids on their team as coaches. But, um, uh, and I think, I think their future looks great. And I'm hopeful Zion, you know, gets really tight, lean, and dominates the league next year and wins three straight MVPs. I, I'm all for all of that. But to not play all season. Yeah. And then, and then you know, if you remember when Zion came back the first time this year, he wasn't so good around the rim. And normally he's incredible, like mm-hmm. the best in the league yep. at the rim. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't that. Well, no surprise. He has no reps. So that's not going to change. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm a little uh, – they're playing top defense in the league last five, uh-huh. last ten games. Yeah. Now they've played some bad teams in that stretch, but still they're playing defense. Um, mature guys. Uh, they've got some depth. Uh, Trey Murphy's coming on as a shooter. Mm-hmm. Very impressive. But um, I just, I don't think Zion's going to be able to lift them. Oh, Brandon Ingram, by the way, looks fantastic. Yeah, he looks really good. Player of the month, great. Yeah, really, really good. Big fan of that guy. They, so essentially what they're going to be is without Zion, or even if he does come as what they were last year, right? right? Same team. So spunky in the first round, but you're not going to pick them to win a series. Yeah, I, I wouldn't, uh, unless the sign makes a miracle recovery. Yeah, no. I, I, and then I, I think they could be pretty scary. Yeah, no. Because he's for incredible. Sure. Uh, the Grizzlies coach had a awful loss last night. or up 20-something at one point in that against game. I was like, oh, we're looking good against the Bulls. Let me flip around and watch the rest of this women's game and focus on that. Next thing I know, I'm like, what? Todd, how'd that happen? And then the wheels literally came off. Um, Memphis is prone to doing this sometimes, particularly on the road, just having these horrendous quarters where they just don't guard and they don't score on the other end. Um, and that worries me about the postseason, right? Because the postseason is all about execution in the half court. And that was just ugly. Now, granted, look, DeRozan, Levine, those are all excellent good players. players. They're yeah. very, very good. I get that. But you were up 20-something. So yeah. what the hell happened? Yeah, I, I didn't see the game. I was watching. I have... I only had the one game on. I really want to focus on the girls game. And, um, you know, I've told you, I've started this new business where Mm -hmm. we're trying to help people get scholarships. We're not doing high school girls yet, but we'll have a division for it. I I won't be doing it, but I'd like to have at least some idea what these girls look like, which is why I watch the game. So otherwise I don't know what a college girl player looks like (laughs) anymore. I know, I know guys pretty well. Um, I, 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 Memphis's depth is a concern as we've talked about on on fair. Uh, John Moran's not a concern. No, no, he's, spectacular jaron jackson spectacular so good they, they, they're on a they're gonna be on a mission after what happened last year and the year before they won a game in utah and then last year they won two against golden state in the conference uh semis, semis. semis. yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. semifinals right right they won one they've won one series so far so they're gonna have a little axe to grind they'll have a they'll have an edge to them which is good um steven adams missing is huge to me that's big he's yeah. such a big part of what they do offensive rebounding wise screen setting bulk in the paint so Jaron Jackson can roam more defensively. Um, if they don't solve that problem, I think they're really flawed. Yeah. Um, the other piece, too, you know, we talked about Jaron's offense coming in. He, was, you know, he shot the ball well last night. He's developing his, his post moves, and his, you know, he's got that – he can get that left hand, right, go over that other yeah. shoulder, the hook in the lane. What he still doing, not as much as he used to, but it's going to matter now because he's too good to be off the floor is the foul trouble. It's like, yeah. dude, you, you are – you're just as important as John Morant. If you're sure. off the floor, this is a problem for this team. So he's got to find a way to limit those – it's not, not the ones where he's being aggressive. That's fine. But those silly ones where you're not going to get that rebound anyway, and now you jumped over his back, and now you got two fouls when you should only have one, right? It's And in the playoffs, 
that's going to be brutal, right? Because you, you go down a foul trouble early, that's a game. Now we're down 0-1, right? And so this is something that I'm sure he's being I'm sure he's being told, and I'm sure he knows. He's not stupid. He knows he's not going to get in foul trouble, but it's something worth watching. Yeah, you have to, as a player, I always teach my guys, you have to have the discipline to not go after plays where a foul's a risk and the reward isn't so great. Uh, if, even if the reward's great and you already have two fouls in the first half, don't do it. This is just, that's the read. That's the decision-making process. Uh, he's still got a little bit of a puppy in him. He just wants to jump at everything. <laughs> he's gotten better. Mm-hmm. But there, there's another level of growth. Yeah, he's young. He'll get there. Mm-hmm. He's a spectacular player. He's but um, you're dead right. Like They're not going to win many games. They're not going to win a game, more than a game in a series, without him playing significant minutes, yeah. especially without Steven Adams. For sure. Um, hottest team in the league right now, the Phoenix Suns. Winners of five straight. They're 6-0 and oh with Kevin Durant uh, in the lineup. Um, look, Monty can do a thing in the playoffs where two of their four main guys, KD, Book, Chris, and DeAndre Ayton, are on the floor at all times. He can always have two of them on the floor at, uh, uh, at all times. And that's such a huge advantage because we talked about with Denver, what do you worry about? The non-Jokic minutes, right? When he gets off the floor, what happens, right? right. Being able to have you know two really good players on the floor always is a bonus. Now, we talked about it at Dozium. You talked about it. It's it's the health, right? Are we, are we sure? Not just KD. Are we sure Book, Chris, Dion, are they all going to make it through without getting hurt? And we don't know crystal ball. We can't predict that. No, we can actually predict probably not. Right. Yeah, we probably, especially with CP and with Durant with their age, um, which is too bad. But in the meantime, they're healthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they won five more, like you said. They're, they're formidable. Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. formidable. And I'm worried about a Koji. I'm yeah. worried about Torrey Craig, Ish yeah, Wainwright. Who are going to be that fifth guy when no one guards? Because you have to you have to guard five with the four. You have to have four, you have to guard their four with your five, which means you leave someone open. Mm-hmm. And a Koji is a twenty plus percent three point shooter every year until this year. A little better now, thirty four maybe, but thirty four regular season. Mm-hmm. Not sure it means anything. Yeah. He's going to have to prove himself. And it's tough because it's not as simple as saying, fine, just put Shaman in because he's a better offensive player. He is, but now you don't get a coach's defense on the other end. So now every time Hunt Landry Shaman and get him in pick and roll, uh, we're going to score. And so this is, this is your dilemma, right? Yeah. This is what happens when your teams, when teams aren't balanced, right? Like you have a scab, you can, you can just pick at, and that's what teams will do. Um, let's move to the East, David. The Bucks, they're just rolling along. Ho-hum, ho-hum. Beat another, although I will say the Celtics did beat them a couple of nights ago. Um, Bucks turned the tide, not on the Celtics, but they beat uh, Philadelphia uh, last night. Looked pretty good doing it too. Look, man, Drew and Chris and Brooke and Giannis, and this team's won a title already. And they have all the, not only have they have the playoff success of the title, they have all the scars and warts of falling yeah. short and not winning. So yeah. they, hey, nothing's going to phase them. They got, they, they're ready for it all. It's very hard for me right now to think of any team beating them four times out of seven in this postseason, barring no injuries, of course. I agree. Um, I think that I saw I saw Drew score 51 against mm-hmm. the Pacers. Sure did. After they just lost the Pacers the week before. It was good to see from them. Um, Drew was unbelievable. 51. He was well guarded for most of them. He's just getting buckets. Mm-hmm. The rim, three. Still play defense. Mm-hmm. Um they, uh, I mean, they were my pick to start the year. They were. I was worried about Chris. Uh, he came back just in the nick of time, rounding himself into form. Giannis has an axe to grind. I think he's got a real edge to what's going mm. on. Uh, they look, uh, they look for very, very good. They, they're my favorites to win. You, you, so. you think? You think the MVP talks bothering him a little bit? You know, I think he can. I think a lot of these guys can create whatever motivation they want. Yes. It doesn't matter if really deep down he cares, but I do think he probably thinks I'm the best player. I'm going to show, I'm going to win the finals MVP. I don't need the regular season. I got two of them. Mm-hmm. I don't want to ruin my mantle for them. I need a, <laughs> I need a finals MVP. <laughs> I wish he has one. <laughs> he sure does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're legit. Yeah. Th- there is a physicality to the way that they play um, the length when Giannis and Brooke and Bobby Porter's are on the floor. It's just like, you're not getting shit at the rim. Like, good luck. <laughs> And then fucking Drew Holiday is just so strong and like in your chest all game. Like this is very good. You know, I get look, they're 
anything could happen right you know chris is not playing that well whatever like it's not i'm not saying that they're like a juggernaut and unbeatable and whatever but if they are clicking right it's gonna be tough man it's gonna be really really tough um are you concerned about philly at all and and the harden achilles situation yeah yeah they need him healthy i think i think a healthy harden and they're right there to win the whole thing Mm -hmm. i think they're really deep maybe the deepest team uh, the Embiid is, you know, cheat code. Embiid's still good. Harden is a reader of the game. Melton's been so such a, We yeah. miss him in Memphis. He's right, such a for good sure. Player. They're just really deep. Um, they need Harden really healthy. Yeah, yeah. Have you... So Boston's kind of sort of started leveling out again. Are you are you still worried about Boston? Are you I am. To, okay. No, I'm not worried about Robert Williams yeah, and Jason Tatum shooting. Yeah. Yeah, these are issues that, that they got time to... We, we, there is no evidence that says, suggests that if you shot poorly in March and April, Correct. you're not going to shoot well in the postseason. Maybe, maybe you will, maybe you won't. There's no correlation yet. There's no, um, we, don't, we can't predict he's not going to shoot well, but Tatum needs to shoot well. He does. Yeah. He does. And then, uh, then they're right there with Philly and Milwaukee. Yeah, no, uh, for sure. Uh, David, I was looking at the standings in the East, and one of the matchups that seems more than likely it's going to be set is the 4-5. Cleveland hosting the New York Knicks. Ooh, boy. Uh, I hear that, and I hear, defense, defense. <laughs> so that's what Tibbs wants his team to do, right, is defend and guard. That's what I know Cleveland does by watching them and what the advanced numbers say. And they play with two bigs, with Jared Allen and Evan Mobley, which a nightmare. Good luck with that. Um, and then, of course, they got a guy. Well, they have two guys, but one guy who really can, I can score 50 in the playoffs anytime. Because I'm, I'm just that good. Talk me out of why I shouldn't think Cle- Cleveland can go to the conference finals. No. <laughs> I'm on your side. I think they can. I watched them yesterday. They, uh, their defense is exquisite with their two bigs. Mobley guards, guards, swallows them up. Allen at the rim and Mobley at the rim. Uh, they're going to have to get shooting from their mm-hmm. three. Yep. Uh, Karis Levert will, yes. will make a difference. Mm-hmm. Um, Mitchell can be amazing. I love their connectivity. I feel like they're a connected group. They do. Um, like they're that. playing for each other. Donovan seems like he's been a great leader he does. from what yeah. I've seen. Um, I think they're a real threat to win the East. I wouldn't favor them because the other teams are better. Right. But, but they're going to have to play well to beat them. So that series against the Knicks. Yeah. I mean, look, the Knicks have their flaws and their issues. But look, Jalen Brunson has been outstanding. I think right. Tibbs, Tibbs has found something with – Grimes and those guys that, that, that he plays a ton of minutes with Josh. The Josh Hart addition has been so good for them. Julius Randle, shit, he might make an all NBA team. Might make the yeah. team this year. Yeah. Um, uh, again, second they, time in three years. Yeah. They, I'm not saying in that series, I'm going to favor Cleveland, but won't be a sweep. Oh, it'll be, it'll be six or seven. Yeah. yeah I, I think it'll be a good series. New York is shooting last 10. I think they're number two in the NBA in three point shooting. That doesn't mean they'll continue it. Right. They're capable of it. Mm-hmm. And that changes who they are a lot. Yes. They're yeah. not a great slashing team. They need to shoot well and then defend well what they're doing. Uh, games will be slower, mm-hmm. lower scoring games. Old school East met mm-hmm. Brad Doherty versus Pat Ewing battles. Oh, man. I feel like people remember how good Brad Doherty was. Brad Doherty I do. was so good. I do. <laughs> yeah. Now people think of him as the NASCAR guy. I'm like, oh no, he was like a Is he really doing great TV big. for them? He's uh, not driving. Uh, no, well, because like he owns like a NASCAR team or whatever. Oh, is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's been That's cool. NASCAR. And I think he still does uh some color commentary for Cleveland, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure for does. basketball? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Mm, maybe I don't remember hearing. Maybe not. I either way, guys, look, Brad Doherty, you younger you youngins. Troy good. Played it for first, North Carolina. First, first pick in the draft. Been, right. <laughs> That's a very, very good play. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, old school, right? Brad Doherty, Patrick Ewing. So we're gonna we're gonna see some. <laughs> we might see some like eighty eight to well, like. You know, you know, you know what we're gonna see. We're gonna see some LSU style LSU women's basketball defense. Nice, physical. Nice, physical. Yeah, that's how the game's supposed to be played. When you have athletes that can do it, right? Yep. Right. I don't want them not to call anything. I want I want you to call the game where you're supposed to call them and let the players adjust. But they're gonna bring it. Yeah. yeah. Why don't more teams employ the two big strategy the way that? Allen and the Cavs with Allen well, and, and Mobley. To be fair, they don't have two All Star guards. <laughs> well, yes, right. So you're 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 giving up something offensively in theory. One of the reasons why, and we'll get to him later. Victor, 
Mm. Wemanyama is this highly rated player is as, as highly rated as he is, is that you can have him at the four or five either. And you're not giving up on three point shooting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not giving up on bucket getting as, as a score off the dribble, off the bounce. Um, and yet you have shot block uh, additional rim protection. Mm -hmm. He's that's rare. Mm -hmm. Right. Jared Allen and, and Moba can't do that yet. So they pick the rim, they finish inside. That's it right now. That's all they're doing. Uh, but you, they do you know, you know who can do well. that. Jared Jackson Jr. can do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tim Duncan, two one oh, baby. Yeah, we love it. Um, you brought him up. Let's talk about Victor. So a little a little highlight uh was floating around the internet of Victor taking a step back three uh in a, a league one game in, in Paris. He misses it, and then all of a sudden comes in out of nowhere and tip dunks back in his own miss from a step back three. I mean, look, he's seven foot a million, right? Like he's got arms that just stretch on for days and legs and limbs. I am so excited for this guy. Everyone knows who listens to this podcast knows that tall guys who can shoot. That is Gerard's basketball love language. Like, so I'm in. Um, but I worry, David. Um, the biggest thing that worries me more than anything else is because as you, you know this, because player development is what you do. I worry about what franchise he goes to. Because, I mean, how many truly good franchises are there in the league that are good at nurturing, men, all the different things you need to do? You can probably count on one hand. Shit, you probably count on like three fingers. And odds are he ain't going to one of them, right? Well, although San Antonio I like. So hopefully he gets to San Antonio. And Pop has a, re a revitalization. But my fear is he goes to Charlotte and then uh, screw it. Yeah. The answer to that question, I think, would be four. <laughs> but I didn't – I've not thought it through. Um, you are right to be concerned. The, the NBA is not – the NBA does not have a monopoly on player development, nor does college. I always get upset when, all right, go back to school and learn how to play. Well, who's, they don't always teach that. Right. Now, we'll get to the NCAA in a minute. The Final Four was beautiful basketball from a style standpoint mm -hmm. and from an IQ standpoint. Mm -hmm. We don't always get that. But they, those teams, FAU really plays the right way. I love their coach, Dusty May, a friend of mine. Um, yeah, I, I think Victor, if Victor's good enough where it won't matter, probably. Okay. okay. To some degree, they'll hit their ceiling lower. The ceiling will be lower because they lack of that. But he'll probably be just fine no matter where. Like, Co like Russell Westbrook and Kobe, mm -hmm. it probably didn't matter where they get. Okay. They'd be the same. Because for most players, right, it's about where they go. But there's the certain ones so. like they, they're going to be superstars regardless because they I think so. have that will. Well, I, I hope that's true for Victor. Um, guys, go back and listen to some of our earlier work on Victor. I don't know if it, we, we talked about it on a pod, I believe. I don't think you wrote about Victor. Um, and David's thoughts on him, right? Like this idea of don't, at least not in year one, don't expect him to be Kevin Durant and like ball handler. Like, no, no, no. He's going to be a great rim protector in, in inside presence, but let him shoot, I don't know, eight, nine, ten threes a game. Yeah. Run yeah. him off screens like, you know, JJ Redick back in the day, like all these different guys that do now. And you'll be just fine. I mean, that guy, plus on defense, that's an MVP quality player in year one. And then you develop all the other stuff as, as time goes. Yeah, he's got a he's got a handle game, but not against NBA players. I, I don't think he'll be nearly as effective off the dribble against NBA players. So work on it. You know, Jabari Smith's gotta work on it. Mm -hmm. But get involved in other things. In fact, Jabari's a good model for him. Jabari's really coming out as a player. Get involved in transition, offensive rebounding, posting up, backing guys down. Victor's got different ways to score, not just beat you off the dribble. That's mm -hmm. just one thing he can do. Um so speaking of talented big men, and you know because you coach big men who are in the NBA right now, it's fucking hard in this league to get to get good. Uh, but someone who you still believe has a chance, and he's starting to show some things, Mr. James Wiseman in Detroit. Yeah, I just read an article about him. Um, he uh, he's barely played more minutes than rookie from Me from from Memphis, Jalen Duran. <laughs> I mean. Three years in the league, and he's yeah. played like less than 100 minutes more, I think, than Duran. Okay. He's, in many cases, still a rookie. Still rookie. And, and worse than that is, at least Duran was doing it week to week to week where you can build mm -hmm. a model of, uh, okay, here's how I get better. Here's what I learned last week. James is so spread out. He's less, barely more than Duran, and, and over three years, this is the first year of really getting a chance to get some lessons in. Um, yeah, I'm not ready to quit on him yet. Uh, if you were called by his agent to work with him this summer, what would be maybe the one or two things you start working on first? I am a very basic guy. So we, I always start with, uh, for a big guy, uh, being more effective around the rim. 
So work on rebounding drills in area, out of area, right hand tips, left hand tips, self tips, offensive rebound putbacks, violent fakes inside, and then simple post moves against smaller guys, which is square up and shoot over them, shot fake quick and go, jump hooks either hand in the lane, attack on that second box or, the, or, or, or late first box to the middle, and then a counter to it. That's going to take two months right there. Because that's that's a lot you said right there. <laughs> yeah, really focus on around the rim where I dominate, and then get them to buy into that. And then you can start doing the 15, 18 footers or even threes mm -hmm. also. But mm -hmm. get them the first to be a big time finisher around the rim and effective rebound or two. Yeah, no, that, that, that makes sense. Well, James Wiseman, David Thorpe rooting for you. We're, we're, we're hoping it all works out for you uh, in the NBA because, I mean, the talent's there. You can see it. Like, he is physical specimen. And he's got games. Just, you know, right. you always say it's oxygen playing. You're not going to learn if you don't play. Like, right. you got to play. You got to fuck up, make mistakes, yep. learn, come back, learn again. Uh, it's forever. You know, we, we were, and we'll talk about it now if we get to the NCAA, you know, that jump, right, from so many guys you coach in the league who have these standout games and you sent the message to a player this morning, you're like, go, oh, great game. Now you have to average that if you want right. to be like, but right. doing that, like becoming just like I can once in a while pop off and do something great to consistently doing it every single night. That is such, such a difficult jump to make in the NBA. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I don't like talking about players very much, but I will tell you the name of this one, just because I met him watching, I was mentoring his pre-draft training coach out in LA and um, uh, his name is Don McFarlow. We have written about Overtime Elite, mm -hmm. yeah. and he's from there. And I got to know Dom, and he's really a fascinating young man, brilliant thinker with, with a body of an NBA player. Good combination. Mm -hmm. Really smart Very kid <laughs> who loves the game and in love with the game. It's, I, I actually call Dom for advice on the draft prospects for this class. Oh, nice. Because he played with all these guys, mm -hmm. yep. and he follows it religiously. The guy lives on – I've had dinner with him before. He lives on his phone watching the games. It's crazy. So he had 12 and 10 last night with five assists and two blocks. I don't think this, a Spurs rookie – Spurs teenager has ever done that before. I'm, I know they haven't. And so my only message to him today was, uh, yeah, that's going to be a normal game for you if you're making it. Like, yeah. Maybe not five assists, but, but – yeah, and he could be one day 18 and 10 as an average for sure. But, you, yeah, to do it once in a while – in this case, he'd never done it before in the NBA. Great. Now what's next? Like you just, I remember watching Dwayne Wade just having to score 30 a night to give his team a chance. It takes so much energy and commitment and a, will, and a willingness to get hit over and uh, over. And some guys get sick of that. And you can't win at the highest level if you get sick of it. And I think that's the part that, again, fans don't understand, David. You see Steph or KD or LeBron or these guys who've been the tops of the league for the last yeah. decade plus. Right. And it, they make it look very easy, but yeah. it, you probably, not it's not like, no. it's, it's just not like, it's really no, it's relentless. The, the other teams are knowing what you want to do. They know your plays. They know your tendencies, especially when you're a veteran. Um, it's, you got to wake up and go to work every day. Uh, you've got to eat right and get your sleep. It's, it really can be, uh, all consuming and you have to have a balance in your life. You can't just be all basketball. It'll bite you. So yeah, the guys that, you know, Devin Booker and Tatum, those guys, I mean, come on, Jalen Brown, it's, all it's, these. It's so the process, hard. right? Yeah. You have to be in love with the process. Yes. Of course you want the results. You want to win championships and MVPs and all. Yeah. Cause that gets you paid. All that's great. But if you don't love the process, yeah. Ain't happening yeah. for you. Completely right. I do this. High school players now with a new business that I have uh, to NBA players, just getting that I had a G League player lose his last game last night. We're having a call as soon as, I, as soon as we click off this. Okay, what now? You got two weeks to recover. Probably. I don't think the teams can call him up. Maybe they will. He's a two-way player. But all right, what's, what's next? Like, you have to have a plan in place for that. And um, if you don't, you just get swamped. Yeah, not, not going to make it. All right, Coach, we started with NCAA. We're going to finish with NCAA. The men's national championship game is this evening. I believe it is Connecticut and San Diego State playing. Correct. That much That much I do know. I don't know anything else. I will not be watching literally a second of this game. Uh, you all know how I feel about college. Yes, I did watch the women's game, so don't come at me. I felt like, listen, that was <laughs> – listen, listen. I, I, I had a Caitlin Clark's must-see TV. Um, she I, is. 
I saw LSU. I was like, Ooh, this LSU team looks pretty good. I saw, yeah. I, I, I got to watch some of this. I ain't watching none of this men's game, but tell us about uh, this game tonight. Well, I like San Diego State because of how they play. They're so rough. I mean, talk about LSU women. San Diego State is rough, physical, defensive team, as they should be. UConn is clearly the class. And I picked, I, I was telling the guys, I did a Sweet 16 bracket. Mm-hmm. And I, that's gone well for me. And I have Connecticut win the championship, so I mean, get higher up. Um, they're, they're the, they've been the best team for a while now, I think. And uh, they, they play fast. They have some NBA players on the team. Um, but to me, I watched it because there was a period of my life where I thought that would be me one day. Mm-hmm. I really wanted to be a college national champion. And so I can't not, even with the girls yesterday, tear up a little bit. <laughs> I just, you know, that's not going to happen for me. Unless the only way it happens for me is my son changes tunes and becomes a college coach and then asks me to be on his bench, which would be the honor of my life. Literally the honor of my life. That, I don't think it's going to happen because I want to coach. Um, he's going to the game tonight, actually. Max is in Houston. Oh, okay. He's going to the, he, yeah, he went with all the Florida State guys to, um, like, assist with the clinics and everything. The NCAA tournament's a big clinic. Yeah, a huge. But he's, uh, he's, he's got tickets to the game tonight. Well, you know who paid for him. <laughs> I, got, I, got the, I got the call yesterday. I'm like, son, are you asking for my permission? This is weird. You're 20, almost 22. You need to know if it's okay if you stay in Houston next year. Uh, I think you need some money. He's like, well, it's $50, Dad. He's not, pay, he's not paying a lot of money. A friend of his has a ticket. He's just given to a cost. Right. But yeah, I'm really glad. He's it's, national championship games are fun. I've been yeah, in Super Bowl. I've been in Super Bowls and Final Fours and all of it. I've seen champions being crowned in multiple and bowl games doing football. It's fun, and I will be watching. I'll probably have the volume. I'll probably have music on until five minutes to go. If it's a blowout, it'd be one minute to go <laughs> to, to hear the end of it. But yeah, it was a part of my life for a long time. That I sent a lot of guys to college. You have. I had a guy playing in this final four this weekend that I'm helping. They lost in the first round in the NC in the final four game. Um, yeah, I'll be watching, but I understand why you're not. <laughs> that, I will say this though, even though I'm not watching, getting to the pinnacle of your sport, the championship yeah. round, that is a huge deal. No like, joke. And this will tie back into what I started at the beginning. Yeah. You have to understand the sacrifice, hard work, the emotion, everything running through your body. You know, Diana Taurasi and Sue Bird were doing their Bird and Taurasi show on the simulcast of the game last night, and they had Gino on, you know, their, their guy. And it's like, Sue was funny. She's like, and we have Gino Oriyama. Sue Bird, who, by the way, has been on been our podcast yeah. before. She goes, it's so weird because I never call you Gino Oriyama. Like, so, coach. Like, coach, and, they're yeah. just, and, yeah. and they're just talking. Yeah. And they always, he talks about, you know, treat it like any other game. And, and Gino's like, well, you guys know, like, you can say that, but it's not. No. Like, you can do all the psychology you want to. It is not any other game. This is it. This is for yeah. the, everything that you've worked for is in this moment. Right. And not for your life, but for the sport that you play. And you don't know if you're ever going to get back to this moment ever again. For a lot of them do know they won't. Sure. They're senior or whatever. Right. So it's just, you, 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 if you're not, you're not. If you don't have anything happening in here, then you're not a real person. Right. You right. are an Automon or whatever. Like you just, so I get it. It, it, it is emotional and wishing best of luck to everybody participating tonight um it, it it'll be quite the show uh we will be back later in the week uh where we sh- pick our awards we, we, you want to do awards on thursday okay i mean next week we'll be doing playoffs that's you're right about that all We're right playing, so let, yeah. let's, let's so we'll, let's do awards oh god so you want to do all nbas too Whatever you say. Oh my God. All right. And we're gonna do our thing where we don't we're not doing five position. I know that's how the league does it. We're not just next going, year, right? Not next year, right? In the new Thank C- God. Yeah. We're gonna just do which by the way, we'll talk about that on Thursday too. The new yeah, CBA is here. Right. And there's some things that are interesting. The idea of like players could have equity in teams and all these I'm confused. Yeah, there's some things to talk about there. But yeah, we'll do awards on Thursday and we'll figure out what team lost twice this week and is now shit out of luck, whatever. Um <laughs> And uh, until next time, guys, take care.